Have you ever wondered what you could learn about yourself if you remembered all of your dreams? What if people around the world could do it and record their dreams in a global database? What can we learn about humanity in general? Well, one young innovator is about to find out. I've always been blown away by the concept of dreaming and the idea that for one third of our lives, our bodies are suspended and our unconscious minds are free from the limits of reality. Sadly, about 95% of all dreams fade away before you even leave the bed. Now imagine a world where we can create a space for dreams to self-organize and give us real information about our consciousness. You know, that, that voice in your head that lets you know you exist. We've created shadow as a way to participate and accelerate evolution. We're going to pick up where Freud and Jung left off and leverage the 50 plus years of innovation that's put rovers on Mars and supercomputers in our pockets. True comprehension comes when the dots are revealed and we see the big picture. Now the Japanese sleep the least, but do they dream the least? Or what do women in Moscow dream about? Or what do kids in Sao Paulo dream about? We feel this is a huge data set that's literally being forgotten every night. If we're successful with this project, we'll forever change the course of human history. And remember, it wasn't too long ago that the majority of the population thought the world was flat. So this idea is bigger than any one of us alone. Joining me now to explain how all of this works is the creator of the Shadow app, Hunter Lee Soik. Uh, Hunter, <laughs> thank you for coming in. Uh, thanks uh, for having me. <laughs> I have to be really honest with you. I had trouble sleeping last night because I, I had all this anxiety about doing this interview because this is one subject. It doesn't matter who you are, everyone's fascinated with dreams. I mean, yeah. when you mention this to people, like if you were at a dinner party, they must just be like, oh, tell me all about it, right? I mean... Yeah, it, it's, really, it's really fantastic. Um, you know, as we said in the Kickstarter, the, the science around dreaming hasn't really been evolving that much. And uh, we're just really excited to put some energy behind it and, and see kind of where it goes. Because there's huge debate about what's the function of dreaming, why people are dreaming, and, and what it actually does. So It's, it's interesting as I, I watch you, because I've read up about how you got to where you are. And I want yeah. you to share that with the audience as well. But I expected to see these mammoth bags under your <laughs> eyes. Because it, it, it all starts with the lack of sleep, doesn't it? And then, yeah. then you like sleep, like, what was it, 26 hours or something? So walk us through. What were you doing, and how did you get to where you are today? Sure. So I, um, I, I worked really aggressively in the fashion industry for about 12 years. And I was sleeping maybe, maybe three, maybe five hours a night. Um, and, and we were doing you know, uh, quite large-scale work in innovation. And um, I worked on a, a pretty big-sized tour. It was um, for, for Kanye West and Jay-Z. I did creative consulting for the tour. And we did a 26-city North American tour. And at the end of that tour, I'd felt that I, I deserved a vacation. So I took my, my first holiday in 12 years. I went down to Tulum, Mexico. And uh, I, I landed on, on a Tuesday at a 4 p.m. And I slept till 6 p.m only it was 6 p.m. the next day. I had essentially slept 26 hours. Jeez. And then I, from that point on, I just kind of re-fell in love with, with sleeping. Um, I'd realized like I just wasn't getting enough. And after having a really deep kind of longer sleep, I just felt, felt better on so many, so many levels. There's, uh, so, so take us from there to where you are today, though. I mean, you, you sure. were mentioning 95%. And people have dreams, and they may make yeah. a little s snapshot of it, or they don't remember them at all. Um, what made you think, well, you know, the dreams are really important, and we need to kind of catalog this stuff? Yeah, so, so from there, I, I was sleeping quite a bit, and I was having these epic dreams while I was in Tulum, and I, I just wanted a, a place to capture this stuff. And I looked on the App Store, and there wasn't anything that was really... Um, kind of compelling enough for me to download. So I kind of went back to New York. I was living in New York at the, the time. I had this other company where we're doing production for, for fashion brands. And then at that moment, I just kind of had and started researching what this idea could be. So from there, we started onboarding a bunch of PhDs. We have essentially 10 on the team from Harvard, MIT, and Stanford. And then uh, that really got me kind of over the edge of there's actually something here. There's a lot of science behind sleeping. There's a lot of science behind dreaming. And now with fMRI and some of these new tools, some of this stuff can come to light. So uh, yeah, I, I just poured myself into the research. And then kind of when I felt comfortable that this could actually be something real and not just a dream, 
we started going for it. And you know, when you look at uh, the science, it was back in the 1950s when they started putting these devices on, and people had no idea the, the rapid eye movement and that yeah. you're paralyzed and basically you're watching these, these films that you yeah. can't get away from. But there is an importance to these films that we watch every night when we go to sleep. But yeah. w w and there's a lot of different theories about it, isn't there, about yeah. what, 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 are, what are dreams all about? Yeah, so, so Robert Strickgold at uh, Harvard Medical School has this idea where dreams are nothing more than a consolidation of short-term memory to long-term memory. So he says that, so we all know that there's two phases of sleep. There's non-REM sleep and there's REM sleep. So he did a game um, where he would ask uh, people to play Tetris and then he would put them to sleep and then measure their brain activity. And then as soon as they hit non-REM phase sleep, he would wake them up. And he realized that the people who were dreaming about Tetris actually did better on Tetris the next day. Mm -hmm. And so what he's saying is like, we're consolidating, we're, we're uh, saying, this is the day that you had and here's how we consolidate it into longer term memory. You've, you've got the device here. So if you don't yeah. mind, walk us through how this works, if you sure. don't mind. Sure, so we believe that 95% of all dreams are forgotten in the first five minutes of waking up. We also believe that modern alarm clocks destroy dreams because they rip you through what's called your hypnopompic sleep state. And the idea is to come through this state, this transition between sleeping and waking very slowly. So we do an escalated alarm. Mm -hmm. And when you turn the alarm off, you can speak or text your dream into the application. Um, and, and I can show you now. So uh, you can set the alarm like this. Oh, cool. And then uh, when you activate the alarm, it's like that. Mm -hmm. And when the alarm goes off in the morning, it opens up into this recording screen. And I'll just record a dream. Uh, last night, I had a dream. I was having dinner with a guy, and we were talking about space travel. And uh, when the check came, the bill was $111, and he paid with a $100 bill, a $10 bill, and a $1 bill. And then he disappeared into a ball of light. So from there, we're doing speech to text translation on the fly. So. Um, here's a dream. Last night oh, I had a dream. Mm -hmm. And then uh, from there, you can say, oh, that dream made me happy, or maybe it made me sad, or to me, actually, it was an, an exciting dream. So then uh, you can do, you can pick out keywords on the fly, and then we'll surface you images based on keywords. So I'll choose like light, space, um, and let's see, travel. And then from there, we're, we're pushing you images based on those keywords mm -hmm. to represent the dream. So I'll, I'll choose this one. And then you can uh, keep the dream private or you can share it. All dreams are anonymous, but if they go public, then they're anonymous in a public feed. Mm -hmm. So, and there it is. But, but give us another one. Give us a taste. Sure. Can you play one back for us, uh, if you don't mind? Sure. So, so then these are my dreams, and then these are dreams anonymously from other people around the world. And um, I'll choose this one. This one looks interesting. I was at a hotel standing in front of the indoor pool. It was after hours, so it was dark and nobody else was there. And the room was all warm and steamy, but the pool was filled with giant chunks of ice. I was halfway across the pool when I realized there was a polar bear in the pool. And so I swam as fast as I could the other side. Um, and somehow I swam the polar bear and got out. <laughs> so that is, uh, you know, that's... I don't want that dream. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what I want to ask you about putting this together. Or how did you get to where you are now in terms of all the different layers? Sure, yeah, the, the layers are kind of... The way that we develop software is in an iterative process. So we, we build something, we look at it, and we test it. And then we say, oh, we need this, and we need that, and we need that. Because we were working on a lot of innovation for other brands, um, fashion brands primarily, we were able to um, kind of think of an idea very holistically and then use technology and strategy and kind of come up with something interesting. So a lot of the groundwork for what this application was came as a thought. And we have these expert engineers that are able to go in and actually take the thoughts that we have and say, OK, this is how we can actually do these things. So th some of the technology that we have now has never really been built before because there hasn't been an application for it. But it's the power of ideas to say, can we do this? And then bringing idea and technology together to actually making something that, that was literally a dream. Let me ask you about that, yeah. though. You, you know, because I thought what was interesting in the video clip is you talk about in Japan, yeah. maybe people don't sleep as much. Moscow, they might, might dream about other things. So, yeah. so what do you think we can learn about different countries, cultures, peoples? Uh, it's... It's interesting. So, you know, I'm, I was born in South Korea. I grew up in, in the States, in Wisconsin, and I feel like there's a lot of 
people who are of a new predicament where they are very global in a sense. So, you know, there's all these different uh, paradigms of people, and I'm interested, or we're interested in just how we're more or less all connected, even if we are physically or geographically in a different location. So, you know, I think there are probably some very common dream themes. You know, I think people are concerned about certain things. I think people um, are dreaming and interesting in certain things. And we'd like to take that data and start to self-organize it to figure out, like, what are people dreaming about? What's the subconscious psyche of the world, in a way? We're, we're also really excited about, you know, do music musicians dream different than directors dream different than scientists dream different than athletes? Like, you know, is there uh, a, a kind of common dream or kind of dream theme that different people have? Um, so, yeah, the, the data, which is completely invisible right now, is so exciting. Once we make that data visible, like, what happens, and then where do we go from there? And then uh, what else, uh, another feature of this that I yeah. find fascinating is the, the Kickstarter campaign. Yeah. Uh, you, you threw this out there to the people, and the people responded. Yeah, oh, wow, it, it was really great. Um, you know, Kickstarter is just another idea of, like, a crowdsourced a platform where people just validate your idea. You put a video out there, and people are like, oh, I really like this. Um, we had a tremendous uh, kind of outpouring from the community and it really gave us the kind of uh, affirmation that we should really go for this that people actually really want it so we raised our funding goal in um, 150 hours it was the fastest out of open source uh, iPhone applications ever in uh, for 2013 we were the second most funded iPhone application um, in open software on Kickstarter, so. So it starts as a dream about dreams <laughs> yeah. in a sense, and then, and then this dream becomes a reality in the sense that, you know, you're flooded and yeah. you're kind of flush with cash. So, so given where this started and how far you've come, yeah. um, you know, you, you're dreaming the dream. What do you think is going to happen when this gets out there? I mean, are, are you going to be prepared? Because obviously yeah. people are fascinated with this. Yeah, so we, we, we don't quite know what's going to happen, and that's the exciting and the scary thing. But what we do know is that we're building a rocket ship, and we're putting a webcam on a rocket ship, so we're allowing anyone to come along with us for the journey. So, you know, I think the future is about is about stewardship and not so much about ownership. And if we can steward this idea in the right way with the right mentality and the right team of people, I think, you know, with the, with the collective group of the community, we can really do something quite amazing. I have to ask one Could final question. I mean, you have a tough time getting through the day because if you've got a, this application, you're getting everybody's dreams. I would just be, I'd, 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 it'd be tough to do anything. I mean, I'd be sitting there and be like, your rabbit dream would be kind of interesting. But the, <laughs> then I'd go to the polar bear and the pool dream, you know. I mean, it, it, it must be kind of consuming, all consuming in a way. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think, you know, for, for us, it's to really create a safe place for people to share an anonymous place where they feel comfortable and then for other people to comment. So, you know, the people have positive dreams and there's a lot of people that have negative dreams, but those negative dreams are parts of something deeper that they want to discuss and we want to create a safe place for them to discuss those things. Well, Hunter, it's fascinating stuff and best of luck. Thank you very much. Get some sleep though. <laughs> it's important. Dreams are not the only type of brain activity researchers have set out to record. Coming up next, a new technology that will help you do any task much more efficient.